Hi, welcome to our presentation, a Seat at the Table, Exploring the Benefits and Challenges of Undergraduate Research. Uh, this is a panel discussion that will uh, talk about just the benefits and challenges between students and professors and institutions within undergraduate research programs. Uh, my name is Spencer Fox. I'm a graduate of Northern Arizona University with a bachelor's in psychological sciences. Hi, my name is Gabriella. My pronouns are she, her. I am an undergraduate student at Northern Arizona University trying to obtain my bachelor's in social, social work and sociology. Hi, my name is Maggie Moran. I prefer she, her pronouns. I am a senior at Northern Arizona University majoring in psychology and minoring in biology. Hi, I'm, oh, go ahead, Jen. <laughs> I'm Shen Molnarshman. I'm an associate professor of psychology at the College of Idaho. And hi, my name is Eileen Palomero Munsell, and I am on faculty at um, Northern Arizona University. Awesome. So I guess uh, just to start it off, um, we'll kind of discuss the benefits of undergraduate research. Does anyone want to go first? I think something that I appreciate um, being an undergraduate student researcher is the experience. I think there are some things that are unique to um, undergraduate research that I'm not getting maybe in my research methods courses where um, we do have to come up with a project. Um, I'm learning not only how to code in different um, ways and with different softwares, um, I'm also learning how to work with other people, um, whether it's faculty, um, other student researchers, or people in the community. So I think um, it's really helping me refine and build my professional skills. Um, yeah, going off of that, um, it gives you a lot of real world experience and kind of taste for what you get into in like personal research in an environment where it's not so high stakes. You have a member guiding you and showing you the entire way and you have a cohort to like rely on. So it's just, it applies the concepts of what you're learning in classes in like a real world situation. Awesome. And then from like the professor like point, do you guys have any um, key like benefits of having undergraduate research assistants? There you go. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, I think that, that it's like, again, all the reasons that you said are great for the students, um, but it's also great for um, us as um, faculty professors because it give well, it gives us a chance to work with students more one on one in a way that we wouldn't in a larger class, um, get to know them, you know, sort of build teams with them. Um, and I mean, I think one of the things that um, you guys did, and I, and I, and especially Spencer and Gabby, I, I know that um, I think one of the most important things I do is to show you how to be a professional in, you know, a context of, you know, in psychology. Um, so you guys have had the chance to go to multiple conferences, and I think that is really, really important for you guys as well. You get to meet people who do things in the field um, that you might not necessarily meet if they don't, you know, if the same kinds of folks don't exist at our home institution. Um, so that also, you know, um, gives you the opportunity to learn how to do this professional things that we don't think a lot about, like networking, you know, <laughs> like getting to know people or collaborating with other um, students from other places like you did with Jen's students last year. So I think that it's really beneficial, you know, I mean, obviously for me, it also helps me get work done, but it, it's, it's just, you know, it's really a nice way to be able to work with a smaller group of students in a more sort of um, intensified, like, you know, specific way that is, it's really great. So. Yeah, I think in addition to that, it's one of the favorite parts of my job. And I think the, the reason that I love it so much is that it, it feels like it comes with a sense of empowerment and self-confidence I see students grow into that I don't always see and when they're just doing work in a class. 
Um, there's usually some sort of culminating experience, I feel like, with undergraduate research, you know, presenting at a conference, um, presenting a poster, and just, you know, the, the way that they feel and light up in that space that they, you know, felt kind of intimidated by research but have learned the skills over time um, and develop that self confidence and empowerment. Like, even if they don't go into a field where they're, you know, doing research, I hope that they take that with them. But then I think that the research we tend to do in community psychology is broadly applicable in so many spaces. And so I think that idea that, you know, you can really kind of gather, gather evidence about anything and then use it to make, to make change, to inform action, um, I find really useful. But I mean, like for myself, I at a primarily undergraduate research institution would not have a research program um, w without students. Um, but I mean, it's, it's more than that. And I think that the, the students often are, are driving what I'm researching, right? They're, they're helping me come up with creative research questions I wouldn't think of. Um, I, I tend to do qualitative research and what are the questions we're going to ask in the interview or the focus group or the open-ended survey. Um, they bring insight that I wouldn't think of and we, we get better data because of it. And, you know, I just, I find that really powerful. One thing I just wanted to add as well is just, getting so for undergraduate students a lot of them don't really get that research experience experience until a like research methods maybe a little bit in statistics so kind of getting that foot in the door and getting that experience going into that class and for me one of the biggest benefits was that that's like research is kind of what i wanted to do it changed my career path getting into the undergraduate research so early and figuring out that I, I didn't want to be a therapist or a counselor and kind of aiding, like choosing, choosing different paths to make it happen that way instead of making that decision later, later on in like my fourth year, third year, like during research methods. So it's really nice to get that, that kind of research experience on early. Um, does anybody else have anything to add on that topic of benefits? I think it really like helped me build um, kind of like mutual respect for my professors, but also for like the way in which research works and like what my professors do assign me um, a journal to read. I like now go into it knowing that a lot of work was put into it um, because I know what it's like to be on the other side of, you know, writing the abstract and editing it and editing it until it finally looks good enough to show to your professor and then editing it again a hundred times over. Um, but it really makes me appreciate um, the research that does come out um, in regard to like community psychology or um, like social justice and other things that um, kind of seep into those topics as well. Awesome. So um, how about the, the challenges of undergraduate research? I think sometimes like um, as a student, I feel like kind of in over my head and I'm not exactly sure if what I'm doing is right or um, Dr. PM really does allow us to take hold of what we're doing. Um, and, you know, she's there to guide us, but um, really it is our own work and it can be hard because, you know, we don't know if what we're doing is correct. Um, but like, thankfully with, you know, her there, it's um, a little bit easier to determine like what's wrong and what's correct. But also I feel like um, when we do go to conferences, um, it can be a little challenging feeling that like, maybe my work isn't as respected as maybe um, like professionals work. So like people who are professors and professionals in those fields are doing their research because I'm an undergraduate student um but like again in the field of like community psychology professors and professionals are also like really nice and supportive um but sometimes it can feel maybe like what I'm doing isn't real research or you know um I'm in over my head again and like the work I'm bringing into this isn't really as credible maybe as someone else's work um I think a challenge that I haven't had yet, but I know friends who have, is research labs aren't one size fits all. You kind of have to find the niche that works. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have to find the environment that works for you and work that you find rewarding. And if you can't, 
you know, it can make you feel out of place. This isn't what you're supposed to do. And you could just be in the wrong setting. And if you shift to another one, you could actually really enjoy it. I agree. Like finding that, uh, finding that, that group that you work really well with. I know for our group, not necessarily. So like we, we connected really well and we worked really well together, but I feel like that could be a challenge for other groups to kind of, figure out your role in the group and figure out how to best benefit each other and help each other out along with the professor could be a challenge as well. And I kind of, to add off of um, Gabby's point, talking about the, when we went to conferences, we were often the only like undergraduate or one of the few undergraduate groups. So it did feel kind of intimidating going in there and, being the youngest one, they're being having less than a year of research experience or less than two. And some people there spent their whole life researching. So that is one of the challenges and one of another one of the reasons why um, undergraduate research should start like earlier. And that's to get, um, what do I want to say? The, uh, to get students involved in undergraduate research earlier and then they can get that that experience under their belt, things like that. Yeah, I think Spencer was leading into what I was going to say. Was there's a, um, a time frame issue? I think where um, you know, if you can, you know, get undergraduate someone there, a sophomore, that's great. But we usually have kind of a mentor mentee model. So maybe that sophomore and a junior, and maybe a senior. And you know, it's sometimes hard to get individuals in their sophomore, but also it's it's hard to carry a project through, particularly if you're doing like participatory methods or qualitative methods, and to go from like design to collecting data to analyzing data to presenting and then finally to publish. And we've still actually yet to get a publication, um, a, a professional um, peer-reviewed publication out of my um, undergraduate lab, as it were. It's just the uh, um, the, the time frame that we work on, that's the piece that gets cut off before we're kind of starting in another project. And so I know that we just, you know, struggle with time. Related to that is, um, you know, resources. My, my institution doesn't have a ton of resources. I have students that often like have to work or are taking so many hours. And so finding the time to do research, particularly when I can't pay them or can't pay them very much, um, they only very understandably have so much time they can dedicate to, to that. And, and that's been a, a real challenge, you know, I'm trying to advocate to get more resources, but, you know, I think, um, like, our natural sciences have a lot of resources for this at, at my school, but this is a struggle. Yeah, I, th I think everything that Jen's be right on, um, you know, there's, there's, as more and more departments are getting, you know, there, there's, there's a sort of research I'm sorry, resource issue kind of across the board. So as more and more departments are like wanting to get undergraduates in, right? The, the really the classic model of what undergraduates do in research is you do entry, you know, or you do, you know, you, just, you help somebody out with their dissertation work or something like that, but you're not really doing anything active. Um, and so a lot of models in, in universities that are, if you're, maybe if you're in junior senior year you can have an opportunity to do some research um, and so then it becomes you know how do you have a meaningful you know how do you meaningfully engage in research and so in our lab we've been really lucky that you know because I basically didn't ask for permission I just <laughs> asked for forgiveness later I've kept my students for long periods of time um, which I later found out I wasn't supposed to do but I did it anyway um, you know so that you know you guys as a group you know had time to you know kind of progress through you know so that you know and also we were also fortunate in that we had a lot of data already collected so that you could carve off some of those projects and kind of make pieces of that your own and, and learn, you know, from that and then maybe go on to do more of your own projects as you got later. But that is a luxury that a lot of places don't have, like to have that many semesters, right? Like Gabby, I think I've had you for, this is what you're like, fourth or fifth. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really, yeah, it's been a long time. Um, so um, I think that's an issue. I think I think 
it's a matter of what we value in psychology, right? And so when we think about student researchers, we often think about graduate students. And again, then undergrads become the helpers, not active researchers, right? Um, so the other thing I think that can be challenging, so if you don't have that time, then creating a cohesive group is harder because as Gabby pointed out, having that cohesive group is so important, the, 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 that cohort of people working together, which especially in community work is so important, right? So building our own community is so, such a big part of it. And if you have people kind of coming in for a semester leaving or not, you know, you only get them for two semesters, then that is incredibly difficult to build that camaraderie around. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, that even with our group, you know, there is always sort of personality clashes that can happen, right? And so a lot of times what um, the, the faculty mentor or advisor is doing is making sure people get along, you know, and like sort of also modeling for people how you get along with people, how you do collaborative work, you know. Um, so it's really just different, like, so what's the model and what does each department actually allow <laughs> for you know what are you allowed to do with your undergraduate researchers knowing that people have limited time like jen said right many many students are working they can't dedicate tons of hours so yeah and yeah so kind of building off of that what are um, like what institutional supports are are present or or, or lacking in like the psychology department um, that make it difficult for undergraduate research? I know you mentioned kind of like the money and the time. Are there any other institutional supports that are lacking? We'll start with lacking. Uh, I can start, I guess. Jen. So, I mean, one of the things that's nice about our department is we formalized research-based instruction courses so students enroll in those courses and can get credit towards their degree in these courses um and so that's good unfortunately the, the bad side of that is that we have so many students and only so many professors right? so the match there is really tough right to how do you make sure that everybody who wants an opportunity to get an opportunity um so so yeah, so there's a bit of a bottleneck there um, as far as resources, and I'm not even sure what the answer would be to that. Um, there are lots of departments that don't have any allocation for this at all. Like the faculty might have time allocated, but the students are part of labs as sort of voluntary extra stuff, you know, that they, you know, to get the, you know, to look good on a, on a CV to get into graduate school, but they aren't normalized into classes like in our department. Um, and like I said, you know, if you work for an institution that values undergraduate research, we are, you know, we have master students in our department, um, but you know, the labs are often run by undergraduates, and that that's not normal necessarily. That's not full, unless you don't, unless you're at an institution that is only a predominantly undergraduate institution. So, so those kinds of things can be tricky. Yeah, I mean, I would say we do have a course where you can get um, it's called collaborative research. You get credit for doing research, and so that's helpful. You know, if I can't offer money, I can do that. Um, but I would say one of the the barriers that we have is within our method sequence within my department. Um, it's all quantitative, so they're learning fantastic quantitative methods. Um, but if I want to do something qualitative or even mixed with them, community-based methods. They often haven't had as much orientation to that. I mean, something I've tried to do to fix it is in my classes backwards design it. So they've at least seen it if they've had courses with, with me. So that's something, but it's still not the same as I think like having it embedded in our, you know, RDA research design analysis or our capstone sequence. And so it takes me a little bit longer to, I think, get my undergraduates ready to do research with me than my colleagues who are doing experiments and the students come in kind of understanding experiments. And so the time is even slower because there's just more training that, that I do. And like, um, I know like NAU doesn't really um, like put its research in um, its SBS field. So like um, they don't have labs for social work students or for sociology students who do want to do research. Um, and I had talked to one of my professors in the sociology department about maybe doing re a research project with them. 
Um, and they didn't really have any options for me because the professors just weren't doing that. And I've been lucky enough to be able to stay in Dr. PM's lab um, to continue that research. Um, I know community psychology is a little bit different, but there are some things that um, are hand in hand. So I think like some universities uh, maybe just aren't really putting the money in or the efforts to encourage um, professors to do research in all departments. Um, so like I know like I'm kind of clogging up maybe some of the psychology resources um, for some students. But I really, again, really do appreciate the experience that I'm getting um, opposed to getting no experience at all. I think another thing as well is kind of the advertising of it, I guess. When, when I was uh, like a research student, I would tell other like psychology students about doing research, working on pro like projects, and they were always curious, like how, how did you get into that? Like, how do you know? Where, where did you find that? Like they, a lot of students, I guess, don't really know about it. You see it on your, your little student portal when you're like filling out classes at the beginning of the semester, at the end of a semester for the next one, but you don't really see too much like university advertisement for, I don't know if advertising is the right word, but you don't see that uh, the opportunities kind of being presented to as many students. You really have to go out and kind of a, approach it. Like you really have to take initiative as a student and connect with a professor, or reach out to them and see if they have opportunities for you or some professors like Dr. PM offered it to her class when I was where I joined, but you just don't see as many opportunities just kind of out there and like presented by the school or by the SBS program. Um, yeah, going off of that, I had a very similar experience. I only found out about undergraduate research via like word of mouth, um, like Dr. PM announcing it in her lecture that she had a lab or a friend who was involved in actually like kind of told me the importance of getting this experience before applying to grad school. And before that, I had never really even heard of it, like through university resources. So it was kind of, I don't know. It was kind of crazy that this thing that is very vital in pursuing like postgraduate like opportunities isn't being presented as being such to undergrads. So what, uh, what makes the work, the research and undergraduate research makes it meaningful to everybody? I can go, I guess. But so, I mean, honestly, I agree with Jen. It's absolutely 100% one of my favorite things that I do um, in my job. Um, again, because I think I, because I work with um, students, I have the opportunity to work with students in a very different way, more hands-on, smaller groups in something that's very practical, you know, and also I think is mutually beneficial, right? So obviously I care about my research, but um, oftentimes I have students who also care about similar things that I do. And so it's, 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 it, they get excited and then they, you know, they also have better opportunities. And so like everyone, every time one of my students gets into graduate school, I feel really <laughs> like I maybe contributed to that just a little bit, right? Um, so I think that's really good. I mean, in, you know, in community psychology, I think we do work that we're passionate about, we don't do, you know, it's, it's not like we're moving widgets around or running participants in the normal way that maybe some other kind of psychology works. So we're pretty invested in what we're doing. Um, so it's very exciting to sort of, I guess, I know how to put it, but get other people the same things, to get other, you know, get watch students kind of light up or come up with their own ideas around that, you know, so like Maggie and, and Gabby, when you applied for the undergraduate student grant, you know, and you came to me with ideas. I didn't say, hey, you guys should do this thing. You did it and you got it. And it was amazing. And it was all you, you guys, it was, you know, you, you know, you generated it, um, you made it happen. And that's just super 
it's just great to see. It's fun to be a part of somebody else's journey and sort of get them excited about things you're also excited about and also watch them do things that are their own. It's, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know to me, that's like sort of what um, being a college professor should be, right? <laughs> like helping people level up and get to wherever they want to be. So it, it's really that. I think maybe my response is more selfish and I might say I just like to collaborate. I just don't like doing stuff by myself. I like doing stuff with other people. Um, I feel like the work is always stronger when it's collaborative and so I just you know I love collaborating with my students but I also do love you know love seeing them succeed so you know to have a student apply to and get into a community like um, you know a postgraduate program last year was you know was really exciting so that's all beautiful and and not going to graduate school but getting into jobs and then using what they learned in the um through research to then contribute um in their jobs is also is also really cool to see. i think one of the things that was meaningful for me was just doing so the, the way our lab was structured, like Gabby had said with Dr. PM kind of allows us to run our own, like she assists us and watches over, but we kind of run the show. We decide what, like what portions of research we want to do and how we want to present it or how we want to go about it. So just kind of taking something that you worked really hard on and putting it out there into the world at a, at a conference, even if there could be 10 people or 50 people in the audience, it doesn't matter, just kind of putting it out, putting your work out there in the world and maybe someone could take away from it, someone could learn from it. I know when we were in, when we did our presentation in Chicago, um, we had like some professors come up to us af afterwards and said that they really liked our presentation and that they learned a lot. And that just, it means a lot, especially coming from like an undergraduate, like someone that had less than a year of experience talking to a, a tenured professor that said that they learned something from our presentation like that. It's just meaningful to kind of spread that knowledge and it's, it's there's nothing like it. So, yeah. I know that like um, my first research conference um, with one of my other co-researchers, um, co Laura, um, we were kind of sitting there and it was like a little awkward, but um, this graduate student who was in the nursing department actually came and read ours and was telling us how um, she agreed with our research because we were talking about um, how students, different students perceive like conversations around um, like social justice um, in different settings, depending on like the professor and what students preferred and didn't prefer. And um, they were just, she was talking about how she really like liked our project and how she thought it was also really important. And she took a picture and um, she was like, I'm gonna have to show my other colleagues and my teachers because she was just impressed. And to me, that meant something because it was someone outside of the field. And like at the time I didn't really understand like why my research was important. Um, but I think just hearing it coming from someone else's um, field and like profession, I kind of, appreciated how like meaningful my project was to other people. Um, I think I've had these like surreal experiences with undergraduate research, like being a recipient of a research grant is really amazing and not super fun. And I just did my phone, which was a recorded panel and the panel was the most viewed recording of the entire conference and that's it's really opportunities that like it's the fruits of your work, and you really kind of just get to relish in this thing that makes it feel like you're doing something really different and unique i just want to add on to a little bit to what spencer said so just like it's really great to have people come up to you and tell you that you did a good job that you know are respected in their field I love nothing more than other, you know, professors and people who are my mentors and, you know, whatever, people in, that are big in community psychology to come up to me and say how well my students did. Because oftentimes, and I know 
Jen can Jen, you're in the same position. I'm the one of the only people who's brought undergraduates to a conference, right? So there, 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 there aren't a lot of undergraduates at the big international or national conferences, and um, so I love showing that you guys can do anything, right? There's no, there's no limit. I mean, you need, you know, you need to be, you need our help, you need our mentoring, but it's not like you, you know, there's some like, oh, you can only do these things and not these things because you're only undergraduates. It's just not the case. And, and so I just love that. It just feels good. Yeah. And I'm always. All right. So uh, what is a, a positive research environment in terms of student behavior, preserved behavior, just what does a positive environment look like? I think as like a student, um, a positive research environment looks like um, coming from like other students is when everyone um, kind of knows each other pretty well and is like, and they collaborate in a way that's like meaningful and positive. Um, when everyone has like a nice attitude and respects research and respects one another, um, and like identifies and values each other's strengths. Um, but like coming from um, a professor and student relationship, um, I think what creates a positive um, research environment is when um, a professor is supportive. Um, when Maggie came to me with the idea for the grant, I was like, absolutely, like, let's do this. Um, but was unsure about how Dr. PM would react. And when the reaction was very positive and supportive, I genuinely felt empowered and felt like I could do anything um, just because one person, someone I respect in the field, was proud of us. And so I think um, when the professor really respects and supports the students, um, that can change the environment to a more positive one. One thing that I found really important in our group is recognizing each other's strengths. So um, the, the group that I, it's um, me, but there's another, um, we have actually an administrator or like administrator, like a VP of institutional research as a part of my group. And this year we have our first non-psychology student. We actually have a creative writing major in the group and just being able to recognize like what are the strengths that people are bringing and then like reimagining or altering the project for this to, I think to bring in um, strengths, I think, is, is really important, you know, and I would, of course, say dialogue, which comes from the relationships, as you all said, like, you know, for a student to be able to question a professor, I think you have to have a, a relationship there, but if you've built it over time, I think you can see that happen, and that's when you're going to get the, um, you're going to get the, the best true collaboration, right, you know, sitting around the circles and collaboration, but bouncing ideas of each other and, and questioning each other and helping each other grow, I think, is collaboration, and that's um, always really nice to see. Kind of building off the collaboration um for our group we never really we were all a team there wasn't a it wasn't an individual thing there wasn't anyone that wanted to take all the credit or there wasn't anyone that slacked off and didn't do any of the work we all worked together as a team we all had the goal of doing the best we could and whether that was doing presentations or whether that was working on data to help other groups or it didn't matter. We were all just a team. We all had that, that one goal and we all would collaborate in any way that we could. Like you said, building off of like strengths and weaknesses. If we know who has, who's creative and who should design the PowerPoint, we know who, who should go through the research because maybe that's that's what they like that's what they do outside of outside of the research so you never you never really had anyone that was just like the lone wolf in the group or the outcast like I felt like we really collaborated and we all made it happen equally together in our own like unique ways yeah and going off of that um I enjoy how there's never like an ounce of competition in the group everyone is there to support each other and everyone will lend a hand if someone needs it and we all celebrate each other's achievements and I think that's just so beneficial for the research being conducted as a whole. 
Yeah, so I mean, obviously, I think this just comes down to two really important things, and that's respect, mutual respect, and community, right? So I'm a community psychologist. <laughs> if I don't know how to build community, then there, it's like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, you know. But I mean, it's so important, like, no matter what work you do, if I'm passionate, but I'm disrespectful to my students, or I'm dismissive of my students, they won't catch that passion. They won't have the opportunity to feel that passion or find their own passion, right? So I think setting up our, our, the reason why our lab works so well is because there's this very, it's just a very obvious, very true, you know, everybody really likes each other, they respect each other. Um, I think having people work in, in smaller groups or so groups of two or three has really been useful, right? So you're not in it by yourself, no one's in it by themselves. Um, I think having had some people around long enough to sort of um, model what being a good citizen of the group is like, right, it helps a lot. Um, so oftentimes people who have been around for a couple semesters, kind of, they don't have to say to somebody, this is how you're part of this group. They just are. And so people learn that. And, um, and so I think that's just, it comes down to mutual respect and then community building, you know, how, what, what can we do together? We're better together, you know, so. And then what, uh, what positive qualities does a student, what positive qualities can a, a professor have in that lab for the most success in your research? And then as a professor, what qualities can a student have that would make your lab the most uh, successful? I think again, like as a student, um, Again, like when I went into Dr. PM's lab, I had never met her before. I like Googled her. <laughs> um, so I was kind of terrified of her when I first met her, uh, but she was very welcoming. Um, and her body language kind of was like a big indicator. Um, and the fact that, because I think at the time I met her, I was um, a freshman psych major. And again, she still respected me as a student um, excited about research. And I think, um, that's kind of what I look for um, in a professor. So um, when doing undergraduate research, I knew like, not only is Dr. PM's work exciting, but she's also exciting. She's kind um, and she seems supportive. And I think it's that um, respectful attitude from the professor to the student, even though there is a difference in um, like education and power um, is what makes um, undergraduate research pretty empowering. And to kind of finding that that balance between letting your students like kind of pursue what they want to do, but also being there for them if they have questions or they need help or if they're stuck, like finding that good balance to kind of give them that that autonomy, but also that support if they do need it. Because I know there were a few times where things were really like really challenging, like Gabby mentioned before, I kind of felt overwhelmed with all these projects, but kind of getting through that and having like Dr. PM support was really, really helped and really kind of build the character and having that experience because not everything's going to be easy. There's definitely in the real world, you're going to feel overwhelmed. So kind of having that, getting that and learning how to combat it is really good for, it's a really good, build a really good environment. Um, yeah, going off of that, you've kind of just like cultivated an environment where students feel very open um, and no one like I've never once been afraid to ask a question or tell you the downfalls or like I'm not catching up to this. I really need help. And I think in a different environment, you know, you could feel very overwhelmed if you didn't have like you to be so supportive and helpful if we weren't, you know, if we were behind or we had questions. Like, I don't know. I think like I know personally, um, a time when I was in research last year, um, there was a lot of like challenges I was having in my personal life. Um, but I had this responsibility in the lab that I just, I couldn't keep up with anymore because everything was just so overwhelming. And um, I was terrified to um, tell Dr. PM like, hey, I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna let you down. Um, but she listened to me and respected me as someone who 
um, wanted to try and was doing my best. And um, she provided me the support, not only with the project I was working on, um, but like in my personal life. And I think um, with my other professors who are like math professors or ISM professors, they're not, they were not so kind about those things. Um, so again, I think it's just that respect that um, professors have for a student's personal life as well. And um, like Maggie had said, you know, it's okay to mess up and to um, maybe not meet a standard that you were supposed to meet. Um, but when a professor is understanding and saying like, hey, we're gonna come back from this, this is what we're gonna do to kind of um, combat the consequences, it's, it can be really supportive and empowering um, and make you excited about research in the future. Like you're not shut down and then, you know, terrified to get involved in the future. You're like, okay, this one thing happened I, and I can keep going. Um, and that's pretty empowering. I just want to let you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know we have about five minutes left. And then, um, from a professor standpoint, what uh, qualities help a research lab succeed for uh, the student in it? So, I mean, I, I think you know, on our side, I think having somebody who has a good work ethic. I mean, it just sounds sounds really simple, but you know, who who will fall through, right? Because again, in our lab, we have people are oftentimes working together. So if you don't show up, that puts somebody else out. Um, again, I think part of the reason why the lab has worked so well is that everybody's got a good work ethic and they've got good communication. If they're not going to be there, they let you know, and they you know, and, or they and they set up a new time, right? So they say that they're going to do what they're going to do. They say they actually they actually do it. Um, I think a willingness to learn, like an honest willingness to learn is really great in a student, right? So that, you know, they're not coming in and going, oh, I know all this already, or, oh, I can't do it, you know, and they speak up, um, you know, so an honest willing to, to sort of, to, to do better and to know more. And then I would say the third thing is just being a good citizen. And that's, you know, being good collaborator, being a caring friend to the other people in the lab, like not everybody has to be best friends, but you know, we've had definite, I mean, we've been around each other for long enough, you know, that we've had people in the hospital, we've had you know, all kinds of stuff going on. And everybody in the lab gets behind everybody for the good news and the bad news outside of the lab, right? Like somebody gets into graduate school, everybody cheers for them, you know, somebody's going through something, everybody kind of bands around and, and what can I do? You know, are they okay? Can you check on so and so? So it's, I think those three things are super important. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would agree with all of that. It's it's almost like the ability to switch switch gears is important too, though, because it's like sometimes I need you to like do something independently, um, and maybe that involves like need you know learning a new skill or seeking out help to do that. Um, but also work collaborative, so being able to switch between those two things. Um, the other one, Island, you said it so much better, but I was just thinking you just kind of got to go for it, right? I think so much of research sometimes feels like it feels like you're doing it wrong, right? Particularly qualitative analysis. I think all of us, when we're learning to do qualitative analysis, like I'm just like, it's just gonna feel like you're doing it wrong. Just prepare yourself for that feeling and just do it anyway. Um, so yeah, that that capacity. Um, I don't know. I would acknowledge in my lab, you have to have some comfort with ambiguity. I don't always have everything planned out as much. I don't always know where things are going. Um, and also, you know, particularly with community or participatory research, things are gonna shift because of things that are out of your control. Um, so just, you know, that kind of comfort that that's okay and we're going to get through this together and, you know, this is about the process as much as anything else. And I think, you know, acknowledging the process is as important as the, as the outcome is, is a big one too, I would, I would add. Awesome. Well, we have about two minutes left. Does anybody have any uh, final thoughts or closing remarks? Again, I keep looking at Gabby, like she, she looks like she's going to unmute, but um, so I'm just going to say, I guess this is just a, a sort of a plea to community psychology in general as a, as a, as a discipline and to my colleagues in community psychology, our students, our undergraduate students are capable of anything and with our help, they will do great things and I never underestimate their abilities. 
um, the, the people who will find you um, are people who care about the same things we care about. They care about social justice and diversity and, you know, looking out for the little guy and they can be great allies. And this is a great spot. Undergraduate research is a great way to build our field just because they're amazing and we're missing out when we don't pay attention to them. I guess to add on to that too, from the, the student standpoint, there's there's no limitations to what you can do. You can, I mean, obviously there's there's gonna be time and money limitations, but there's always opportunities to try to go to conferences and try to do research. So if you can get into research and continue with it and build up that CV and resume, and if you have plans on going to grad school, it looks great. I've, I'm in the process of applying to grad school and talking to admissions programs. That's the key factor. They're like, oh, you have a few years of research experience. Like that's, that's a driving factor and it looks really good. And it's just, it's a great experience. Like being at the conferences in Chicago and Portland, and those were some of the best times of my college life. So just a great experience. And again, from like another student standpoint, I think um, with all of my, my internships and my apprenticeships, undergraduate research has is the most meaningful thing I've ever been a part of, um, both academically and personally. Um, I would, if I had to call it all over again, I would have gone into the lab first semester <laughs> as early as I possibly could. Awesome. Well, I think that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.